Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions on this, the first Thursday or the Thursday after Ash Wednesday, which um, for my friends up in the north woods of Harsha at Faith Lutheran Church is uh, still Ash Wednesday on Thursday because we do midweek services on Thursday up there. And at this point, I'm still planning on being there for church. I think the snow is supposed to be pretty much done before noon. Um, and uh, so it, it, I, the road should be getting cleared. And heck, I'm going to, I think I'm going to head up that way uh, between noon and one o'clock. I got to run the bulletins for Sunday. I got to get to the post office and pick up the mail and things like that. I don't think I'll have Bible study though. I think I'll, that'll be early now. I'll talk to the people who have, who come and see what they want to do. But good morning. Glad you're here with us. Um, I am, I, I, the only explanation I can give is that uh, uh, the cloud cover and the falling snow is causing some issues um, with my Starlink service, uh, getting out to the low Earth orbit satellites and back. Um, there is a heater in the dish, and that heater's turned on, which melts the snow and keeps it from having a, a snow piled on it. You know, I remember uh, the days of... Um, c-band satellite uh when i had my tv shop and uh, and working for another guy and the the uh the the big dishes you know those of you who live in the rural areas might remember the big like 10 foot uh, i think before it was over we got down to like a five foot dish a six was better but a five foot dish but the 10 foot dishes <clears throat> that were solid right no mesh metal they were spun stainless or spun aluminum um and we'd get phone calls on in weather like this. My dish is out. My dish is out. Uh, and uh, the question was, did you go outside and sweep it off? Um, because even though the actual reception antenna was up in the, the nose cone, um, the the attenuation, uh, that is the, the signal coming down from the satellite being reflected, and those dishes were to gather that signal together and reflect it up to that nose cone. Um, if there's enough snow on there or ice, um, it would be enough to attenuate that signal, reduce that signal down to the point where it wasn't usable. Then the little dishes came and they were almost vertical, so you had much less problems. My little dishy is is only oh slightly bigger than a than a sheet of construction paper. Um, it's it's only you know about like you know I think it's I think it's like twenty. I want to say it's like 28 inches by 18 square. It sits on a pole. It's got motors that that turn it around so it can point, and it's it's flat on the front, but a little bit parabolic on the back. Um, probably more for the hardware, the the, the uh, electronics that are behind it, than nothing. But it it actually moves and pivots uh, to point itself. I don't have to do anything. The system aligns it. Uh, it's, it has a it can spin 360 degrees, and it can um, uh, tilt uh, zero. Uh, what would it be? It'd be zero to 90 in in either direction on its on its mount. So it's kind of a it, it's different. It's different. Technology has come so far. We've got such amazing things, but it it uh, it still is affected by signal signal attenuation. There's not much that can be done about that. Um, the commercial units are, are much bigger. The dishes are like three feet across, and I, I imagine that's for that exact reason. See, we just dropped out a little bit, I think. Um, so it, we might be a little rough here, but here we are. Here we are. Uh, it did. It snowed all night, um, uh, it, off and on a little bit. But, um, yeah, Bonnie says, excuse me, Bonnie said it was blowing out there too, which is probably the bigger issue. Um, and I, I have not been outside since, oh, I picked up Alexander from play practice at five last night. I think that's the last time I went out. Um, wasn't feeling good last night, so Bonnie took the dog out the last time. Uh, but I, I'm going to say that we've got at least, probably at least eight inches out there. Um, and it's still coming down. There was a there was a gap, and there was a couple hours here where we didn't have any. Now it's coming down again pretty good. Um, and it's supposed to do that till nine o'clock or so, according to the weather service. So um winter kids are off school well you know 
<clears throat> there was a day when a snow day was a snow day, but thanks to all this great technology, they have a virtual learning day. So they all have to pull out their Chromebooks and do whatever assignments the teachers have given. Uh, Alexander even has the offer from the choir director, uh, who's also directs the music for the uh, musical, uh, to uh, um, Zoom with him uh, uh, today um, to practice some of the songs. He's He's got one of the major parts, and he's got, he was telling me last night, I've got solos, I've got duets, I've got choir, he said, and, and sometimes I'm singing in a falsetto. He said, and I have not got them all down yet. He will. They got a week. <laughs> uh, but they'll start, Monday starts Tech Week, and they do full rehearsals end to end. Um, and I think I think it'll all come together in the end. I remember those days. I, I never did, I was never on the stage, but I was a tech guy. Uh, stage crew, uh, lighting and sound. And I know that, that watching the actors, you know, it seemed like, a week before performance, how is this ever going to come together? But it, it does. It does. Um, so we're anxiously awaiting that. I'm rambling this morning, but I'm, I'm it's, it's a snow day. You know, so, well, good morning. I, um, there's something else too. Signal's not great. Um, my new equipment that the ladies at Faith uh, helped me buy is coming. That's not here yet. I did get some clamps to move some stuff and i've got to do some rearranging in here before i i do that but i think that's everything that isn't so i suppose we should see who is here this morning that would be the the next thing to do uh geraldine and neil good morning to you verna good morning kathy good morning did you guys get any snow over there uh, from from this i mean you were supposed to jill and john good morning hey guys is it um did you get a significant amount up there too? It looked kind of like some of this didn't go past uh, Tomahawk, so uh, or or well, I guess it passed Tomahawk, but not past Highway Eight, maybe. Um, although it should have, you know. Usually up there is worse than down here. You get more snow. Uh, anyway, uh, Mindy, good morning. Snow day for you, huh? All right. Well, I'm glad you're taking a minute to to join us today. I guess you're another person. It'd be interesting to ask how it is up there because uh, you are, you do live uh, more proximate to the church um, than Jill and John do. Uh, but I got, I, I moved here because there's other people piping in. I do have my cell phone over on the side here too that I'm watching to make sure that the signal's still going out. Cindy, good morning to you. Jerry, good morning. Uh, Connie and Robin, good morning. Looks like a serious storm. Well, you know, it's snow. How serious can it be? Glenn, good morning. Mike and Karen, good morning. Uh, sunny day with a soft breeze. Are you just trying to rub that in? I know you are. Uh, Bob and Jeannie, good morning. No, no internet. Well, you know, I know that feeling. Um, you're on your, well, your phone, your phone works fine, right? A little harder to see the picture, but I'm not really showing you anything today other than my ugly face. Uh, but good morning, Jeannie and Bob. Glenn, oh, uh, uh, lots of snow and rain. Yeah, I, you know, and I think if you're if you're at home there, Glenn, uh, Manitowoc, you probably got uh, more than we did because I think the heart of this went through the middle of the state. Mushtak, good morning and evening to you as well. Um, you remember a couple of years ago when I sent you that uh, short video of driving to uh, Harshaw through the snow around uh, in January? Uh, that's what it looks like again. Glenn, uh, Glenn, oh, Glenn's got, okay, 20, 12 inches. Yeah, all right, that counts. That counts, I can live with that. Uh, Renee, good morning. Yeah, you, okay, you did get snow. Um, didn't get the ice storm that's, well, and that's the thing. You go south and it's going to be warmer and what's coming down is more of a, freezing rain than uh i was watching chicago was probably just absolutely a, a scary place to be because they they um they were in the midst of the wintry mix the the pink section that nobody wants to be in on the on the color radar map hey bonnie's here 15 bowling snow uh winter storm oh is that what they're calling it it's delilah i remember we didn't name storms we just had a winter storm uh okay mindy's saying about eight inches with 
you think there's three to five more coming with between now and nine o'clock. Hmm. Well, we were supposed to have 10 to 16 total, so we'll have to see. Okay, and Cindy's saying six inches. Um, and three more since she shoveled. Okay. Yeah, Hazelhurst. Yeah, north of north of Harshaw. So, well, north northwest of Horsh of Horshaw. All right. Well, let's get down to the to the business at hand here. Good morning to all of you uh, watching and not chiming in. Um, it's kind of fun because I got the phone here, so I saw like uh, Bev. I see that you're watching, um, and there's a few few others there too. So. Uh, uh, good, good morning to you who are watching the background or those watching later today uh, or on YouTube, provided I get that up. I guess the thing to say here is like, share, comment, blah, blah, blah. Um, I do appreciate it. I do read the comments when you when you make them. So uh, let's get down to the business at hand here. Time is passing. I'm not going to do Bible study up at Rhinelander today. I, 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 don't, I don't think that would be the wisest move. I have a feeling that... Although Highway 51 might be open, Highway 8 is probably questionable. So I got to call them here when we're done. Uh, Lutheran Service Book, page 295. Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families. If you have a copy of such, I have the Treasury of Daily Prayer here, and I am open to the morning order, as is on page 295, Daily Prayer Individuals and Families, morning order. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, turn the page here, our psalm today is Psalm 8, verses 1 through 6 and verse 9. Psalm 8, verses 1 through 6 and verse 9. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? You have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the work of your works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You know, it's true. How majestic is your name in all the earth? You, 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 the Lord created all the things that are here, everything that we have before us, and they were all they they are all good gifts from Him. We sometimes abuse them, we use them in ways that they they were not meant to be used, and and that's uh, the biggest problem. That's that's the result of sin that we take the things that God gives us and and misuse and abuse them. Um, but he's, he's created them, and he gave us, he gave mankind dominion over them. He gave us the authority over all of creation. Um, the truth is, we really can't control much of it. If you think we can, look outside, um, especially in north, the Northwoods today. Um, but it is ours. It's ours to do with as we please, um, to care for. And even as God said, love one another, uh, you know, love the Lord your God with all your strength, all your heart, and all your mind. Uh, he also said, love your neighbor as yourself. And, and the world is our neighbor, so it is our job to, to care for it. Um, but it is there for us. It, it, its purpose is to serve man. We have dominion over the works of his hands, all things that uh, under 
man's feet. Um, but the majesty of the Lord endures forever. And we are under his feet, under his dominion. We serve him. Which is a joy. Which is a joy when you realize all that he's done for us. All right, let's go on to our, our reading today. We're sticking with the New Testament at least another day here. Um, today, Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 28. So we're picking up uh, where we left off yesterday. Jesus um, had, uh, John had been baptizing and Jesus came and was baptized by, Jesus, by, by John in the River Jordan. Uh, and the spirit drove him out into the wilderness. Now, Mark does not do the temptation. Um, he says, he, he, he simply says um, that Jesus was driven out in the wilderness and was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. And then angels were ministering to him. So that is, that is the sum total of uh, uh, what uh, Mark gives us for um, the temptation. Um, and here... Mark goes already in chapter one right into Jesus's ministry. You know, Mark is Matthew is a catechism. It's it's it it leads you deeper and deeper into the faith as you read. It it, it evolves and and grows. It starts with basic ideas and grows things uh, into it. Um, and then uh, Mark is more of just a here it is, but it has Mark has unique things that Matthew didn't have. Um, Luke, again, the newspaper reporter, gives us kind of the chronological point-by-point -point events. Um, and John, John is really all about Holy Week. John is, even though he's giving us the narrative of Jesus's life, literally from creation, starting in John 1, um, the, 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 the restoration of the world, but it's all about the beauty um, of, the, of, of what God did in Christ Jesus. Um, yeah, so, but Mark is, Mark is kind of the, the cliff notes, if you will, the cliff notes gospel. Give it to me. Give it to me quick. Give it to me straight. Let me know what it is and I'm done. That's, that's kind of the way Mark is, but he's got a lot of unique things too. So Mark 1, uh, verse 14 through 28. Now, now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James and the he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him, and they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, again, Cliff Notes, just, you know, it, there isn't a whole uh, narrative prose when Mark is speaking. It's just, this happened. In fact, his, his text is marked, um, theologians, uh, <laughs> seminary students at least, um, will quite often uh, 
uh, I don't want to say mock, but but have some fun with um, with Mark because a lot of his points in his text, and this is a marker as to when he's talking about something no, new, but in the Greek, he'll say euthos, um, which translate, translates it into the English immediately. And so everything is urgent in Mark's text. Not only is he concise in, in what he writes, but it's urgent, immediately this, directly that, um, now, here, this. You know, I mean, it's, there's no... It's like, nah, we got to get it done, you know. Uh, talk about a gospel that can give a person anxiety. So John the Baptist is arrested, and, and we hear about that later. But here at this point, we simply know that he's been arrested, right? And, and you and I know because we know the whole gospel. We, we've heard all of it. We know that King Herod, uh, the Tetrarch, has arrested him because John was went to him and said, you can't be marrying um, the wife of your brother. Uh, Philip. He took he took Herodias to be his wife, and Herodias was uh, Philip's wife. Uh, and it isn't that Philip died or divorced her, apparently. It's just that he took her as his wife. Um, and John said, you can't do that. It's against the law, uh, the law of God. And so uh, Herodias wasn't very happy about it. And, um, you know, happy wife, happy life, right? Um, even if the marriage was wrong, uh, so John, so John was arrested uh, by King Herod. Now, there's, like I said, there's more on that uh, in another place. But when Paul, uh, John the Baptist, John the Baptizer, had been saying, um, you know, at, at the at the river, people coming, he was baptizing them, repent, for the kingdom of heaven comes near. Um, Jesus now um, takes up that same proclamation, which is why later on when. Uh, Jesus asks the disciples, "Who do you, who do people say I am?" One of the things they say is, "Well, John, because he's he's speaking the same message that John was speaking." Um, uh, my phone went ding. Um, so he 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 picks up the cry of John. In fact, I think in Matthew that's what it says. He picks up the proclamation of John, saying, "The time is fulfilled." Right? The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. What else is there? Um, the time is fulfilled. Christ has come. The, the promised Messiah, promised long ago, has now arrived. And the kingdom of heaven is Christ. It's Jesus. In him. Yeah, I know. The signals just bopped out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, signal dropping in and out. Um it, so Jesus picks up that same thing. Repent, believe in the gospel, the good news. Remember the word gospel means the good report, the good news. And Jesus is bringing the good news, the good report, uh, that the time is fulfilled and that the Messiah, the promised one, the anointed one of God, the Christ has come. Messiah is the Hebrew word for uh, anointed one. Christ is the Greek word for anointed one. So Christ is nothing more than the Greek translation of Messiah. When you, when you hear Messiah, Christ, same thing, same word, same meaning, same intent, same purpose. And so he goes along uh, the Sea of Galilee and he sees some, some fishermen there, Simon and his brother Andrew, and he, uh, they're, they're casting their nets into the sea. Now, the various gospels have more about this, right? Um, I think it's in Matthew's gospel, Jesus gets into the boat and asks him to push out a ways and he preaches for a day. And, and he hears it. Hey, Ann and Deb, I figured you guys were somewhere nearby. Um, uh, but here it's simply that Jesus goes by the shore. We don't get into all the events that took place. It's just, you know, Jesus looks at him and says, hey, follow me and I'll make, I will make you become. I will, I will make you become. Isn't that an interesting construction? I will make you become fishers of men. You are not yet fishers of men. Um, but, but this is now put upon you by the Holy Spirit. I will make you become fishers of men. And they, and they left their nets and followed him. Not, not hesitantly, immediately. There we go again. And immediately they left their nets and followed him without hesitation. A little farther, um, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother Jane, uh, John, um, they weren't fishing. They were mending their nets. They'd probably been fishing during the night and 
now they're back on shore. And of course, the nets are their livelihood. You have to have functioning nets in order to be able to, to fish. So they're maintaining their equipment and Jesus called them probably in the same way and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with hired servants and followed him. I don't think they knew what they were getting into. I don't, I think they just thought it was like going to be a, a thing for the day or a couple of days. Um, but it's it's definitely the work of the Holy Spirit that calls them. And then, and then uh, immediately they, they went into Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath, immediately, there he goes, immediately on the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and uh, was teaching. Jesus begins to teach in the, uh, uh, the uh, synagogue and they're astonished because he teaches as one with authority. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that Jesus was recognized by the Jewish people. He's 33 years, 30 years of age at this point, uh, which is kind of the age of, I won't say majority, because a lot of the things that we think of with the age of a majority, you'd be able to do younger. But the age of 30 is when you're old enough to serve in the temple. The age of 30 is when you're, when you, when you're old enough to have learned enough to be able to stand up in the synagogue and, and speak read the word from the scroll and speak. And the men, the Jewish men of the synagogue would do this. It wasn't always just the pastors, um, but he was a traveling rabbi. He, he would go from synagogue to synagogue. And, um, but his, his way of opening the scriptures was different. Um, the, 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 the scribes in the synagogues uh, would read, or a, a man would read the text. And then they would, then they would quote, other recognized rabbis, and they would preach from the authority of other men. Um, but I believe that when Jesus began to speak in the synagogues, um, that he spoke from within himself. After all, he's God, right? Um, so, so his preaching and teaching was a first person thing, not a third person thing. Uh, and he did it with authority. This is what this says, you know, you know, more the way we preach today, the more the way a pastor preaches today, um, based on the authority of Christ that he has is an ordained and called servant of, of the Lord and, and his education. And so he began to teach with authority. And a, a man with an unclean spirit cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. Shh, don't tell anybody. He commanded him to be silent and, and called him out of the man. And uh, the people were astonished. What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even unclean spirits. And so they are amazed. Um, and I think initially, in the first weeks and months of Jesus's ministry, the three years of his ministry, I think some of it was just novel. I think the novelty drew people as much as the good news. Um, it's kind of like, come for the novelty, stay for the gospel. Um, and that's a dangerous way to go. Um, if you're God, you can probably pull it off. Um, but novelty is always a, a dangerous way to go in the church because novelty is trendy and trendy goes with the times and the times change. So his fame spreads throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. People begin to hear about this wandering rabbi who's preaching and teaching a, a new thing in a new way. He's really not. He's preaching what the scriptures have always preached, um, that the Messiah will come and that the forgiveness of sins uh, will come through that Messiah, and that will be the end of the law and the prophets. Um, that will that will be the fulfillment uh, of God's promises to His people. And so we 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 look Sunday morning. We go uh, to hear the good news. We go to hear uh, the promises of Christ Jesus in His Word and in His sacrament and in the proclamation of that Word and in the prayers and in the hymns. Good hymns are a sermon within themselves. Christ came to save us from sin, death, and hell. And it's not simply by the proclamation of the word, but it is by his death and resurrection through which the fulfillment is completed. The fulfillment is done. To Tetelestai, as he says from the cross, it is finished. By his blood, our sins are washed away and forgiven. And we live in him. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Oh, no, for the prayer of the day, reading. I'm sharing readings with you guys. So today's reading, a piece of the solid declaration of the formula of Concord, 
Um, so there's the apology, right? That's where the, the actually the, the book of Concord, the Confessions of the Lutheran Faith, start with the three ecumenical creeds, the Apostles' Creed, the, the um, Nicene Creed, and the Athanasian Creed. Um, and then the apology of the, or the, the I'm sorry, the Augsburg Confession, which was presented to, to the uh, Holy Roman Emperor. Um, the apology to that, which is the response to the Roman Catholic response to the apology. Um, and then there's the, uh, are the small called articles next? Yeah, I think it's the small called articles are next and the treatise on the power and primacy of the Pope. Um, and then the solid declaration, the, the declaration of the formula Concord and the solid declaration are two different things. Um, one is one is a shortened version, kind of the again the cliff notes. The other one, the solid declaration contains um, not just the arguments but also the reasoning behind it. So today, that last and 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 that was written not by Luther. That was written by the second Luther um, and and some other men. Uh, Martin Chemnitz uh, wrote that, and it was kind of the final word um, on the Lutheran faith. This is this is after after we've developed um, this practical. Uh, faith, uh, the practicality of the Lutheran faith, uh, faith alone, Christ alone, Scripture alone, solas. Um, they spent some time, and and it, what it what it this, what the Declaration or what the, what the Formula Concord does is it lays out uh, antitheses and theses. Okay, so uh, the problem, what we don't believe, and what we do believe. And then it has condemnations. Those who believe what we don't believe, we condemn them. So here we go. Uh, this is from the Solid Declaration, the Formula of Concord, uh, Section 5, Paragraphs 3 through 6, in legal terms. When we see this disagreement clearly, okay, now I don't know what the disagreement is. Hopefully they'll tell us. Uh, we note that it has been caused chiefly by this. The term gospel is not always used and understood in one and the same sense. It is used in two ways in the Holy Scriptures and also by ancient and modern church teachers. Sometimes it is used to mean the entire doctrine of Christ our Lord, which he proclaimed in his ministry on earth and commanded to be proclaimed in the New Testament. Therefore, this includes the explanation of the law and the proclamation of the favor and grace of God, his heavenly Father. For it is written, beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And we've heard that today in Mark. And shortly afterward, the chief points are stated, repentance and forgiveness of sins. So when Christ, after his resurrection, commanded the apostles to proclaim the gospel to the whole creation, he compressed the sum of this doctrine, doctrine just means teaching, the sum of this doctrine into a few words. He also said, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Paul, too, calls his entire doctrine the gospel. He summarizes this doctrine, doctrine under two points, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. In this sense, the general definition of the word gospel, when used in a wide sense, and without the proper distinction between the law and the gospel, is correctly said to be a preaching of repentance and the forgiveness of sins. For John, Christ, and the apostles began their preaching with repentance and explained and taught not only the gracious promise of the forgiveness of sins, but also God's law. Furthermore, the term gospel is used in another way. In its proper sense, gospel does not mean the preaching of repentance, but only the preaching of God's grace. This follows directly after the preaching of repentance. As Christ says, repent and believe in the gospel. So that's from the solid declaration talking about the gospel in its wide sense and its narrow sense. The wide sense being law and gospel the narrow sense being simply uh, the grace of God in Christ Jesus. So let us go to our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Holy One of God, 
you showed that the kingdom of God had come by your healing the sick and casting out demons. Heal us in both body and soul by the medicine of immortality of your body and blood, that we may truly be your disciples. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we continue with prayers for ourselves and others on this Thursday morning. Oh, Lord, oh, you know, we forgot the creed in the Lord's Prayer. No, we didn't. This is where they go. We confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray, as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now for ourselves and others. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. As I begin a new day with you, search my heart, dear Lord, and purify my affections, so that I may love only those things which are pleasing to you, and may put you first in everything I do and say. Help me to overcome the temptations I will meet this day, Strengthen my faith so that victory over the devil may be mine to your glory. Keep me mindful of the sufficiency of your grace and let your strength be made perfect in my weakness. Give me the grace to guard against sins of the tongue and preserve me from thinking evil in my heart against my neighbor. Teach me the joy of walking the ways of your commandments and bless those who walk in your fear and favor. Watch over me this day when dangers overtake me and ward off any evil of body or soul. If afflictions are to come to me this day by your gracious direction, humble me, or keep me humble and obedient to your, your loving will. Key, and thanks be to you, Lord God, for all your past benefits and for all your promises of future mercy. Direct my day in such a way that I may learn to praise you better tonight for the favors that I have received on this day. This in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray also for those who are in need of body or soul, especially this day, Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, and all those who call upon your holy name. Be also with those who travel forth on this day or who are forced to go and keep them safe as they travel. Uh, be with those whose job it is to clear the roads and salt uh, we ask that you keep them uh, between the lines, O Lord. Uh, guard them and keep them safe this day as well. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotion to a close a little long again today. I guess maybe I got to tighten things up a little bit. But God's peace be with you. Um, be safe. Stay warm. We'll see you back here on Friday morning for our daily devotions together. God's peace.